Hello and welcome to this video on threat modeling. The biggest weakness is not knowing the weaknesses in your solution. Security is everyone's responsibility. Security cannot be a separate department in a silo and not fit within your DevOps processes and pipelines. Security has to be part of DevOps and that function is called now DevSecOps. By bringing security into your DevOps workflows and pushing the responsibility of security all the way left into the development lifecycle, you reduce the cost of creating solutions that are secure, you reduce the cost of being able to test and fix issues as they arise. Now Microsoft has this fantastic tool called Threat Modeling. The purpose of the Threat Modeling tool is to help you design solutions and identify known vulnerabilities that could arise using best practices, and known vulnerabilities in the marketplace. We're gonna have a quick look at the threat modeling tool, start to design a two-tier architecture of a web app and a SQL database, and then see what recommendation the tool puts forward to help us secure our architecture and solution. All right, so let's get started with the demo. The Microsoft threat modeling tool can be downloaded from the Microsoft website. I've already downloaded and installed it on my, my machine, so let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start off by creating a model. Creating a model presents a blank canvas, which gives you an option to drag items from a stencils. A lot of the known components that you would use for any architecture are already listed out here. Now, I'm probably new to Azure, you could assume that, and therefore I don't really know what the known vulnerabilities with SQL Azure are. I don't even know what are the best ways to secure SQL Azure if I'm a first time developer to SQL Azure. So in the interest of time, I'm going to open up a workflow that I've already created using the threat modeling tool. Now, as you can see in this web app, the uh, workflow that I've created that the user interacts with the web application from the browser, the request flows into the web application, a request is then raised to the SQL database, the SQL database then sends the the response and then the response goes back to the browser. That's what the workflow looks like. Now if I wanted to know what are the potential vulnerabilities with this sort of an architecture, then I could come in and choose the function of creating a full report or creating a custom report. Let's choose the function of create full report. So here we are with the threat modeling report. Scroll down, we can see the architecture that we've defined. And against the architecture, we've received a number of recommendations on what could be the potential um, risk area and how to remediate it. I mean, some of the ones that you could think of right away is using a generic SQL login and password. You know, once the user gets access to the SQL login password, they could then use that to start modifying the schema. Instead of doing that, you would create purpose uh, full accounts and assign them role-based access to limit the attack surface should the solution ever be compromised. Another interesting one here is TDE. Like a first time dev to SQL Azure, I might not be fully aware about transport data encryption, but with the help of Azure Key Vaults, you could set up a TDE to secure the data at rest and the data at storage and then cycle those keys through Azure Key Vault so that even if the keys are compromised, they're cycled automatically and the data remains encrypted, therefore it cannot be leaked and compromised. So scrolling down, uh, the, the, the risks are rated by priority. So if you were gonna invest some effort in remediating, I would highly recommend that you start with the critical and the high priority ones rather than attacking the medium and the low ones first. Okay. So going back to the thread modeling tool, I would say, um, you know, don't make this a one-off exercise. Uh, don't make it a, a, you know, an activity that you perform at the outset of the project in the design phase. Make that a recurring activity that you come back and revisit to. After all, it's easy to save these uh, templates down, um, make them available to others within the projects and keep referring back to them as you evolve the architecture of your application. I hope you found this useful and an inspiration to go back and try these on your own real projects.